Alors, chers amis canadiens et canadiennes, nous sommes présentement en diffusion live à Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are actually broadcasting live from uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Mon nom est Stéphane Blais, président de la Fondation pour la défense des droits et libertés du peuple. My name is Stéphane Blais, president of the Foundation for the Defense of People's Rights and Freedom. We are proud to support uh, Vaccine Choice Canada and the plaintiff in the lawsuit that's been, um, that's been done uh, Monday. And uh, we are going to present today uh, Mr. Rocco Galadi, the lawyer uh, who is in charge of this uh, lawsuit. He will explain uh, what's happening uh, in terms of lawsuit against the government. Alors, aujourd'hui, on va vous présenter euh, les détails de la poursuite euh, qui a été entamée pour Vaccine Choice Canada de la part euh, de Rocco Galati, Maître Rocco Galati et euh, des plaignants. Alors, euh, la Fondation pour la défense des droits et des libertés du peuple est fière de supporter moralement et financièrement Vaccine Choice Canada et les euh, plaignants. Uh, the foundation is really pleased to support uh, financially oh, and morally the, overflow. The, um, the plaintiff and the Vaccine Choice Canada. Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous présente Rocco Galati, un, un, un avocat courageux qui va nous expliquer les détails de la poursuite. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Rocco Galati. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ted, if you want to introduce uh, the press conference. Wait, tell him to wait. with Parliament and our ruling through the pretense of royal prerogative, which has been unconstitutional since 1689 after the, the English Civil War. Also, we are seeking a declaration in Ontario that the declaration of the emergency was contrary to the enabling legislation and does not meet the requirements of the enabling legislation to have been declared an emergency. We, we are also seeking a declaration that both the federal and provincial governments in simply following the dictates and undisclosed dictates of that of the WHO are infringing our constitutional right in that they've abdicated their constitutional duty to govern, uh, which is a constitutional duty under our framework. We're also seeking declarations under the Charter that the measures taken reach sections 2, 7, 8, 9, and 15 of the Charter, and that self-isolation, social distancing, compulsory wearing of face masks, arbitrary and unjustified closure of businesses uh, are unconstitutional, and that these measures are, one, scientifically, medically not based and not, not proven to be effective whatsoever, Two, they pose physical and psychological harm. And three, they are extreme, unwarranted, and just unjustified. 
and as such they reached the section 2 right to right of association, the section 7 right to life, liberty and the security of the person, section 8 right to unlawful search and seizure, section 9 right to arbitrary detention by enforcement officers, and section 15 equality rights are breached as well by these measures. And the the measures include, uh, above and be, uh, beyond what I just stated, the closure of schools, daycares, park amenities and playgrounds, the discontinuance of access to education, medical, dental, chiropractic, naturopathic, hearing, dietary, therapeutic, and other support for the physically and mentally disabled, especially children with special needs, both physical and neurological needs. They have been left out in the wind with their families not only suffering with these severe disabilities but suffering from having to fend for themselves in this time. The, the plaintiffs also challenge any notion that's been bantered about and repeatedly suggested that it will be lawful or constitutional to mandate mandatory vaccines for the COVID-19. The plaintiffs and Vaccine Choice Canada resist the notion that it is constitutional to force unwanted and non, non informed and non consensual medical treatment on anyone, including a vaccine if one is developed for this, for COVID 19. The plaintiffs also further uh, take on the federal government to task and governments to task for what we call in constitutional law infringement of rights through omissions to a failure to act and in particular the plaintiffs seek a declaration that the federal crown and its agencies and officials including but not restricted to the CRTC have by glaring acts and omissions breached the rights of the plaintiff to freedom of speech expression and the press by not taking any action to curtail what has been described by the UK scientific community as, quote, Stalinist censorship, particularly the CBC in knowingly refusing to cover and publish the valid and sound criticism of the COVID measures by recognized experts, and that they further have failed to act to protect against such uh, social media giants as Facebook and YouTube removing postings, even by experts, which in any way contradict or criticize the WHO and government measures as, quote, misinformation, quote, contrary to community standards. And it, it is impossible to fathom how a world expert, including Nobel Prize winners, can be taken down from YouTube and Facebook because some functionary at Facebook and, 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 and uh, uh, YouTube deems that expert opinion, scientific or medical opinion, as, quote, misinformation. The, this is a violation of every Canadian's right to Section 2 of the Charter by, by means of freedom of expression and the media. Lastly, we seek a declaration that the measures have a devastating impact on those with severe physical and neurological special needs, particularly children, and infringe Section 15 of the Charter and this also includes the vulnerable elderly who are 84% of the so-called COVID deaths dying in long-term care facilities, which have turned into a, a, a solitary confinement hell for those elderly. So 84% of everybody who has purportedly died from COVID is an elderly person in these long-term care facilities. We have also named the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, as a defendant in this lawsuit. Uh, we have not named other media outlets because CBC is an exception in that it is a publicly funded public broadcaster pursuant to statutory mandate under the Broadcast Act set up by the federal government. And as such, my clients seek a declaration that the CBC, as a publicly funded broadcaster under the Broadcast Act, owes a fiduciary duty to be fair, independent, impartial, objective, and responsible in its news coverage and investigation of, of the full pandemic and COVID measures, which fiduciary duty it has flagrantly and knowingly breached. Two, that the CBC 
owing a duty of care to the plaintiffs as the national publicly funded broadcaster has, gro has been grossly negligent in its coverage and reporting on COVID-19, and three, that the CBC has knowingly and intentionally suppressed, censored, and unjustifiably belittled expert opinion opposed and critical of the, the WHO and government line on COVID, and as such, has propagated, quote, misinformation and, quote, false news. Uh, so, so this is, this, this is basically the broad stroke declaratory relief that my clients seek. In the coming weeks, we are preparing already to bring uh, an injunction against the mandatory masking bylaws in the City of Toronto and elsewhere in Ontario. And secondly, we'll be preparing any necessary injunctions with respect to return to, sc to school in September of school children, particularly in light of the expert opinion issued by the Hospital for Sick Children two weeks ago, in which two expert viro virologists and 20 other experts wrote a report stating that children should be returning to school in a normal setting without social distancing and without any masking in September. Uh, the statement of claim sets out very clearly that the avalanche, the avalanche of the scientific and medical evidence is that one, masking has never been effective, does not do anything to stop an, uh, an airborne aerosol virus. Number two, in reducing the oxygen intake between 10 and 15 percent, actually does severe harm, ranging from constant headaches to actual heart attacks with the elderly and the infirm. Secondly, social distancing is not a scientific nor medical uh, concept. It's never been used. The only place that we see social distancing was created by the CIA as an interrogation and torture technique which is still employed in Guantanamo Bay to keep people apart because we are essentially a social creature as human beings. So the, uh, the, the limiting of gatherings is also not scientific. This was admitted by the BC Chief Medical Health Officer, Bonnie Henry, early on in this pandemic. So what we have is we have we have a policy that's brought in by governments who are one, unwilling and absolutely refuse to disclose what the source of their medical advice is and where, from whom they are getting this advice. Secondly, they absolutely refuse to acknowledge or respond to the over four dozen world and Canadian medical experts who have said that these measures are bogus and furthermore, CBC, as a national broadcaster, has refused to give any airtime to these contrary valid criticisms and opposition. Last week, the New York Times published an article pursuant to a report signed and forwarded to the WHO by 239 world experts from 32 countries setting out what my clients allege in their statement of claim with respect to the measures. So the government has essentially said, we're shutting parliament. Two, you're gonna do what we tell you even though we're infringing your constitutional rights and we're not gonna tell you the substance of the advice we've gotten nor from whom. This under the constitution is completely unacceptable and we're gonna take the governments to task in a court of law based on an assessment of the scientific and medical evidence. So uh, I'll leave it at that, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now. So we're gonna take questions from the media first. So if you are from the media, sorry, we're only taking questions from the media. If you would like to pose a question, please send a private message to admin. Identify yourself and who you're with, and then you will be uh, welcome to bring questions in one at a time.
was asking that, the question, I'm sorry. You'll have to ask mainstream media. Are there any questions from the media? Does that leave it open for other municipalities to join in as we go along, or is it just the ones that have mandated their masks now? Uh, the question here physically uh, at the press conference was, with respect to masking, uh, does, uh, does the injunction cover other municipalities uh, to be able to join in, or just the ones that pass laws now? Uh, we're going to be primarily specific to bylaws that have been passed that have been pleaded in the statement of claim, but the net effect is that if whatever ruling comes down would be binding on other municipalities anyway. s'inquiète sur le fait que le port du masque obligatoire euh, dans les transports en commun, dans les commerces et tout ça. Euh, Pouvez-vous nous expliquer la procédure en français tranquillement oui. sur ce que vous allez faire pour les injonctions? OK. I had a, a question here in French asking me to quickly explain the injunction, for the, the injunction with respect to masking. Uh, dans les prochaines semaines, on va remettre à la cour une injonction contre la ville de Toronto, les comtés de Windsor-Essex et Dufferin-Cambridge pour dire que les masques obligatoires sont contre la Constitution et qu'on enlève les règles jusqu'au point où dont ce litige se termine. Un peu. Karen, at the back of the uh, magazine. I'm sorry you stopped Thanks. writing it, but uh, we're, we're preparing the injunction now. I hope to have it filed within seven to ten days, and then I'm going to move the court for a emergency hearing, either by Zoom or in person. Uh, it's really, it's hard to predict in these days how quickly the court will move, but uh, I think I think it's urgent enough. This, this arises from the COVID measures, and so the that's the most urgent thing in society now. So I hope to I hope to get a hearing date before the end of August, quite frankly. In three to four weeks. Are, are your pleadings available for, for anybody to look at? They're, they've been mounted already this morning at 9 on the website of Vaccine Choice Canada. There's a PDF. Uh, the statement of claim, which runs 191 pages, is a, is a long but easy read because it's double-spaced. <laughs> okay. And you should know, Rob, because you've read it dozens of times. Right, and I drafted it, yeah. Are there more questions? Uh, not yet. You know, I, can, I can ask more. Sure, go ahead. Please, Peter. Um, and obviously, the, I think the crucial thing here is, is getting the best expert witnesses possible. So I don't know whether you've got people lined up yet or whether you're willing to disclose that yet or... Well, that's my question. Well, expert witnesses. Yeah, we have we will have expert witnesses. Let me say, Karen, that if you read the statement of claim, we actually name and quote all the world and Canadian experts who have been opposed to these measures. They're in the statement of claim. And you get a flavor of the type of people we're going to be calling as witnesses. That includes, by the way, you know, our former chief Ontario medical officer, 
Richard Chavis, who was very critical and continues to be critical of these measures, saying that, uh, you know, don't wear a mask unless you intend to rob a bank. I'm quoting him. So we have, we have multiple Canadian experts who are being ignored. Never mind ignored, they're not even acknowledged by the government, nor are their valid concern, concerns responded to. Apart from say, uh, stating the obvious that my client, uh, one of my nine clients, Vaccine Choice Canada, does have a donate button on their website. If people want to donate to the lawsuit, they can donate directly to Vaccine Choice Canada and earmark it for this lawsuit. Apart from that, as you know, the Supreme Court of Canada said that, uh, that uh, uh, funding is a solicitor client privilege matter. I don't want my clients to be cross-examined on the funding issue because it's a collateral issue. But people who want to contribute and support it can certainly go on to VCC website and donate through the website. So if there are no other questions from the media, I'm not even sure if any mainstream media is even online, which is very distressing from a, uh, from a constitutional uh, democratic point of view. I have never seen such a global, you know, here you have such a global crisis declared, imposed, slammed onto us, and every single mainstream media does not want to hear a single valid criticism. They won't even cover the only lawsuit filed in Superior Court against these measures on the Constitution. Uh, they have single-handedly, not single-handedly, but a group of select elites have in four months, literally, removed our democratic structures, removed our constitutional framework, neutered the court system, and so we may, and I say it unabashedly, are living in a very quiet but nasty dictatorship right now. I, I can't fathom this, that the media would censor valid criticism and not cover a constitutional challenge to these measures that are up front and center every day in a pornography of dumped statistics without any analysis or contextual analysis of what these statistics mean. Can I just comment on that? Sure. I, I used to, in my capacity as litigation director at the Canadian Constitution Foundation, I used to have to send out news releases and so on. So, I mean, I just don't know whether the problem is that they've chosen to ignore you or whether perhaps the news releases weren't sent to the right people no, no, they all got it. I had calls from the mainstream media, but they're not here. I've had calls yesterday. No, no, they get it. They got them. I, listen, Karen, I don't know if anybody in the country knows the history of my, my litigation practice. I've never had a problem at a press conference. My only problem has ever, ever been uh, finding an arm, enough room to hold a press conference for my national uh, profile cases. And so they know, they know this is going on, and uh, they're just not around. Maybe they're just going to take the pleading. And, uh, and write a distorted, biased uh, story on the litigation from the pleading and pluck out what they want. And I say to them, beware, because if you slander me or my clients, you'll be getting a lawsuit. If they want to be objective and fair, let them cover it from the, uh, from the comfort of their own closets. But if they misrepresent or slander this action, they'll be hearing from us. Real cool. Stéphane speaking. Stéphane, yes. Okay. Pouvez-vous expliquer, euh, Maître Galati, euh, en français, oui. ce qui se passe au niveau des médias mainstream okay. pour la couverture de cette cause qui est probablement oui. une des plus importantes de l'histoire du Canada? Oui. Uh, I was asked in French to explain for the French audience uh, about the media. Oui, aujourd'hui, uh, hier, il y avait un avis qui était envoyé à tous les médias au Canada. Malgré le fait, le, euh, le fait qu'il y a plus de 1000 personnes sous cette appel de Zoom, il n'y a même pas un journaliste de Radio-Canada, CBC, CTV. Euh, il y en avait hier des journalistes qui m'ont appelé, mais il n'y a personne ici présent pour poser des questions. 
à l'exception de dans à l'exception de vous autres qui, qui sont ici physiquement voilà. mais c'est la média alternative si je et je voilà parlais. effectivement okay. merci euh, maître Galaxy. Well, never mind about a rich dialogue. We haven't been able to have a pauper's dialogue. <laughs> you know, so uh, there you have it. And I guess we're now going to have to turn to social media and word of mouth and the rest of it. Their absence speaks very loudly. Yeah. Maître Galaxy, est-ce que vous acceptez une, une entrevue avec moi live à 13h en anglais et en français? Oui, si, si, si j'ai le temps, oui. Oui, okay. parfait. So, if there's no other questions from uh, the app, yes, the absent media. Oh, there you are. Hi. Lawrence McCurry. Hi, Lawrence. Um, of course, my phone rings. Many people believe that this is a globalist takeover and that these rules are being imposed on an international basis. What makes you believe that a Canadian court will uh, rule on these matters? Well, we, we, we plead that aspect of the case, uh, Lawrence. If you read the statement of claim, we, we, we plead that dimension of the case. It's clear from the evidence that's what's happening. It's clear from the evidence that the government is simply, uh, simply uh, parroting and dancing to the tune of the WHO, despite their national and international experts who oppose these measures. So a Canadian court... Uh, has to deal with it because the measures aren't being imposed just in New York City where the WHO is 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 is, uh, is located they're being imposed right in your front door in your local cafe so the measures are being imposed in Canada so the Canadian Constitution applies uh, I'll note that the yesterday after various reports the Romanian Supreme Court tossed out the measures as being bogus well keeping in mind the way that the courts ruled on the Comer case, um, is it not possible they may just refuse to hear this at all and simply throw it out with, without prejudice? Anything is possible with the courts, especially in a, in, a, in, a, in a declared emergency, in a panic context by the government. The courts do not have a good history of, of uh, maintaining their stamina in, uh, in this type of uh, climate. You know, but you have, you know, the recently retired UK Supreme Court judge, Lord Sumpton, had very, very harsh words for these measures. And his, uh, his May interview with the BBC is quite, quite uh, lucid and illuminating and from a renowned jurist. He, he thinks it's absolutely pathetic that everything is being adhered to lock, stock and barrel without any analysis, criticism or debate of the issues and this is from a former UK Supreme Court judge so uh, that may be Lawrence a prevalent view uh, within the judiciary uh, keeping in mind I'm always you know uh, I'm always a pragmatist and it's clear that any virus including your normal flu strain that comes every year mostly impacts on the elderly and the immunocompromised and so, so people have to be careful during the flu season because if complications of pneumonia come along, then something can happen. The, uh, the, a, the judiciary in terms of age is a distorted demographic because by the nature of when you get appointed as the judge, most judges are in that vulnerable group. So, you know, they're going to have a vested interest in not uh, in protecting these measures on a very sublime level i'm not saying that that is going to be their conscious attitude but the law the law is a human institution you can't divorce the human being from the decision maker and so i think we're dealing we're, we're going to be dealing with the body of people in the courts who who are the most affected by anything of this nature 
You're welcome, Lawrence. Any other questions there, Ted? I don't have any questions. Maître Galetti, on peut revenir peut-être en live avec un, un, quelques questions, réponses. Très bien. Euh, okay. Oui, à, à 14h, 2h. Oui, oui, oui. Parfait, excellent, on va l'annoncer. Est-ce qu'on termine la conférence de presse, Maître Galetti? De vous qu'on l'annonce? Bien sûr. Sorry. Vous avez une question? Yes, I'm just wondering, so you mentioned that um, these are logged on the BCC website. Is that including the other eight um, plaintiffs? Is that the right word? Well, we, we've redacted the front page on the PDF on the, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, statement of claim because to protect the personal plaintiffs from harassment, experience tells us that these issues are very volatile in terms of people getting nasty. And so we felt that, uh, you know, uh, some of our plaintiffs said, I don't want my name posted. It's in the court. You can't hide it in the court. but. If we're going to post it on the website, they wanted their name redacted so they don't have hostile and threatening reaction and harassment, which has happened in the past in such cases. Okay, but so then are you welcome then to have other plaintiffs added to this? Uh, at this point, it just, it just, it just uh, uh, trips the litigation to add plaintiffs. So once it gets rolling, to add a plaintiff, you have to bring a motion and all of that, and so we'd rather get on with the litigation. I just, I experienced biowarfare, nanotechnology, and every violation of my constitutional rights imaginable living here in Canada. That's actually how I discovered you. I was researching constitutional right. work, so right. I'm so in support of you, and you have no idea the mammoth you use the word yeah. avalanche. You have an avalanche of support behind you across the globe. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to now say that, you know, there's about a thousand people on this Zoom call. So unless there's other members of the press, uh, I, uh, my clients appreciate the wide support, but I can't possibly, we can't possibly sit here and take all the questions, otherwise it'll take all day. So uh, the, 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 the statement of claim is on the website, anybody can access it, and there'll be further announcements and further updates. So unless there's any other questions, uh, thank you very much, and I'm going to close, uh, close off the press conference subject to what my client and, bo and boss, Ted, Ted Kuntz, uh, uh, wants to do. Thank you, Ted. Yeah. May I ask a question? My name is Vlad Todorov. And my question yeah. is about uh, yesterday, uh, John Tory. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to... We'll close off the press conference now. Uh, appreciate your words this morning, Rocco, and all the effort that you have put into this statement of claim. I know this has been uh, an incredibly challenging endeavor because of the complexity of it, uh, but it's important for Canada, it's important for Canadians to reclaim their rights and freedoms, and it's important for our governments to be held accountable. Um, but I look forward to having this move to the courts. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. All right, guys, it's the end Audio. of the Claudio, uh, you got to tell these guys that, you know, my family cannot tolerate the blasting of music at huge high levels. They seem to think they can just blast their music at whatever levels they want.